all right in this video we will be discussing about bilirubin metabolism because we know that abnormal metabolism of bilirubin will lead to jaundice right bilirubin metabolism abnormal metabolism will lead to jaundice so we must understand what is jaundice to start uh, this this video we must understand the jaundice and its differential diagnosis see jaundice is a yellowish discoloration of the body tissues resulting from the deposition of bilirubin when bilirubin is not excreted properly out of the body it gets deposited in the tissues and cause yellow discoloration of various body parts and it is called as jaundice right tissue deposition of bilirubin occurs only in the presence of serum hyperbilirubinemia and is a sign of either liver disease or less often a hemolytic disorder or disorder of bilirubin metabolism right ya to ban zyada raha hai ya fir liver usse metabolize nahi kar pa raha ya fir wo metabolize to kar pa raha hai lekin usko excrete nahi kar pa raha to these three possibilities can be there in order to bilirubin in 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 order for bilirubin to rise right the degree of serum bilirubin elevation can be estimated by physical examination right first of all what do we do in the opd or when whenever the patient comes to you you do physical examination you look for yellowish discoloration of sclera sclera we most often see because sclera has a particular propensity for bilirubin because of presence of elastin right so we look at sclera we look at the base of the tongue we look at the palms right and all of these observations we always make under the uh, natural sunlight or daylight they say ki slight increases in serum bilirubin level are best detected by examining the sclera why because they have a particular affinity for bilirubin due to the high elastin content elastin has a particular affinity for bilirubin so first of all you will see the discoloration of sclera only you will not see bilirubin anywhere else in the body but in the sclera you will see even the minimum rise in bilirubin for example that is 3 mg per deciliter as little as 3 mg you will see in the sclera right the ability to detect scleral ictus is made more difficult if the examining room has fluorescent lighting obviously you have to do it in, in the natural day, daylight if the examiner suspects scleral ictus a second site to examine is underneath the tongue we have to confirm the scleral findings by uh, uh, you know uh, checking the underneath of the tongue because sometimes what happens a uh, normal individuals also may also have yellowish discoloration of sclera or very dirty kind of sclera maybe because of dust or uh, some other cause uh, so to you know reinforce the findings of yellowish sclera we have to look at the base of the tongue then a serum bilirubin levels as serum bilirubin level rise the skin will eventually become yellow in light skinned patients and even green if the process is long standing the green color is produced by oxidation of bilirubin to bilirubin right i think you must have understood that uh, they say ki agar serum bilirubin level rise karta rehta hai to uh, sclera to pehle 3 mg per deciliter pe they will become yellow but if the serum bilirubin uh, bilirubin continues to rise the skin will also start becoming yellow yellowish so that is all what is explained in in this paragraph dd of jaundice see jaundice is because of bilirubin but sometimes there may there might not be bilirubin in the body uh, but the skin may still be yellow the conditions are carotinoderma right carotinoderma is a yellow coloring of the skin and is associated with diabetes hypothyroidism anorexia nervosa but most commonly it is caused by ingestion of excessive amounts of vegetables and fruits right such as carrots leafy vegetables squash peaches oranges that contain carotene but the uh, special finding is that 
in in jaundice the yellow coloration of the skin is uniformly distributed over the body whereas in carotenoderma the pigment is concentrated on the palms only right soles only forehead nasolabial folds right carotenoderma scares the uh, sorry spares the sclerae sparing of sclerae in carotenoderma and the pigment is concentrated on the palms soles forehead and nasolabial folds so that is very important to understand the difference between carotenoderma and jaundice then drugs like quinacrine sunitinib and sorafenib may cause yellowish discoloration excessive exposure to phenols may cause yellow discoloration of the skin so all these are the differential diagnosis of jaundice Another sensitive indicator of increased serum bilirubin is darkening of the urine which is due to the renal excretion of conjugated bilirubin. We will come to know in the upcoming slides that how conjugated bilirubin is excreted out in the urine because you know that bilirubin is excreted into the, into the bile. How does it reach the kidney is a, is a little explanation of the topic and I will come to it in in the upcoming slides serum bilirubin levels increase when an imbalance exists between production and clearance okay a logical evaluation of the patient who is jaundiced requires an understanding of production and metabolism yes all right now the production of bilirubin how is it produced 85 percent will be produced from the breakdown of hemoglobin in the senescent red blood cells right senescent rbcs they will break down and the hemoglobin will form bilirubin 85 percent comes from this source 15 percent comes from premature rbcs and rbc precursors in bone marrow and myoglobin and cytochromes all these will contribute to the remaining 50 percent Total bilirubin is 4 mg per kg in, in the body. Site of production is reticuloendothelial cells, primarily in the spleen and the liver. These organs will, you know, uh, trap the old or senescent RBCs which are about to die. They will try, these organs will trap these RBCs and these RBCs will get lysed. Hemoglobin will be released and from the uh, heme part of the, uh, of the hemoglobin, uh, bilirubin will be produced it is virtually insoluble the initial bilirubin is insoluble right but we need to transport it to the liver so we have to make it soluble in the water how do you make it soluble into the water by binding to the albumin it it non covalently binds to the albumin then it reaches the liver and hepatocytes very efficiently they extract all the bilirubin from the albumin in the in the blood and uh, mm, the bilirubin enters the hepatocytes and the further metabolism takes place how in the endo endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocytes example this is the hepatocyte in the endoplasmic reticulum what will happen bilirubin is conjugated to glucuronic acid this is called as conjugation of bilirubin very important point and the exist of the bilirubin metabolism conjugation of bilirubin to glucuronic acids right and the enzyme used is udpgt uridine diphosphate glucuronosyl transferase UDPGT very important to remember let me make it highlighted using this marker right this conjugated bilirubin is water soluble and is transported to the bile canalicular membrane where it is actively transported into the bile canal by MRP2 transporter here at the basolateral side of the hepatocyte there is bile canaliculus 
this will be conjugated bilirubin and it will be transported into the bile canaliculi here will be a transported located uh, and this is known as mrp2 the name of the transporter multi drug resistant protein 2 mrp2 very important because the mutation of this protein will lead to development of certain congenital conditions which will cause unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, uh, hyperbilirubinemia for example krigler nager syndrome and gilbert syndrome also to some extent so very important to understand and remember is this mrp2 transporter defect and mrp2 transporter in itself what is the function of mrp2 transporter is to is to transport the not to transport is, is to you know allow the entry of the uh, conjugated bilirubin from hepatocyte to the bile canaliculi right here is the uh, image i have taken this image from the harrison it is labeled image this enzyme ugt 1a1 it is nothing but udpgt right uridine glucuron also transferase 1a1 this is the full form of this enzyme what will it cause so to start with uh, let me mark it in here albumin is bound to unconjugated bilirubin first of all when it is produced it is bound to albumin it is transported to the hepatocytes right albumin separates unconjugated bilirubin is separated and it is taken up by the uh, this transporter bilirubin transporter and into the hepatocytes here it is bound to the glutathione then it is you know with the help of this enzyme this unconjugated bilirubin is converted to bilirubin monoglucuronate once up again it is acted upon by this enzyme and it is converted to bilirubin diglucuronide right then it is transported to the bile canaliculi with the help of this protein mrp2 see there's this is another pathway which says that this bdg and bmg they are transported back into the sign into the space of dsa right you do not need to remember this it will be remembered it will be needed to remember only if you know you come across such question which asks this but if you want to remember you can remember but it is not important as such only important is this mrp3 because the defect of this transporter will lead to rotor syndrome so you need to understand the basic mechanism the unconjugated bilirubin is converted to conjugated bilirubin and it is transported to the bile canaliculi through this transporter mrp2 that's all in the next slide we will be continuing with this thing this conjugated bilirubin is excreted into the bile and eventually it reaches the ileum right where bacteria acts upon it and reduces it into bili urobilirogens right gut may it will be converted to urobilinogen ab iska kya hoga 90% of this urobilinogen is excreted in the feces right 90% goes into the feces and 10% will undergo enterohepatic circulation now this comes into the portal blood right what will happen now some amount of this 10% is not taken up by the liver and it reaches the renal glomerulus this is how the conjugated bilirubin reaches the glomerulus and it is excreted in the urine remember conjugated bilirubin or urobilinogen in this case is water soluble and it is excreted by the kidney normally also but this excretion is not very much so as it will cause gross discoloration of the urine or gross you know dark brown discoloration of the urine dark brown discoloration of the urine will occur only if there is increased conjugated bilirubin production 
और इंक्रीज कॉन्जुगेट बिलरूबिन रिलीज फ्रॉम द हेपेटोसाइट्स राइट और डिक्रीज कॉन्जुगेट बिलरूबिन एक्सक्रीशन इन दीज केसेज कॉन्जुगेट बिलरूबिन विल राइज इन द ब्लड एंड इट विल बी एक्सक्रीटेड इन टू द यूरिन थ्रू द किडनीज मेजरमेंट ऑफ सीरम बिलरूबिन इज डन बाय वेंडनबर्ग रिएक्शन एंड वेंडनबर्ग रिएक्शन टेल्स अस दैट द बिलरूबिन मे बी डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट राइट इट इट देयर आर सर्टेन रिएक्शंस इन दिस रिएक्शन इन दिस वेंडनबर्ग रिएक्शन समटाइम्स द बिलरूबिन सम फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द बिलरूबिन विल डायरेक्टली यू नो रिएक्ट विद विद द रिएजेंट एंड सम ऑफ द बिलरूबिन विल नॉट डायरेक्ट it will require the addition of certain alcohol in order for it to react to that reagent so direct bilirubin will directly react indirect bilirubin will not directly react but important to understand is that direct bilirubin means conjugated bilirubin and indirect bilirubin means unconjugated bilirubin right conjugated unconjugated another important point is that which is more direct or indirect we have understand that indirect bilirubin is much more normal in in normal scenarios normal case mein direct bilirubin is less than 15% of total and indirect bilirubin is more than 85% of total oops is more than 85% of total now it has been written that unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia means if there is hyperbilirubinemia to start with means serum bilirubin is more than 1.5 theek hai milligram per deciliter and we see that direct bilirubin is more than 15% then we will say that it is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia if it is uh the we have to look at the direct bilirubin only if it is more than 15 means conjugated hyperbilirubinemia if it is less than 15 it means unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia that is all we have to look at the direct bilirubin only measurement of urine bilirubin why is it important because any bilirubin present in the urine is always conjugated why because unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble unconjugated bilirubin cannot be excreted by the kidneys any bilirubin present in the urine is therefore conjugated bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin is always bound to albumin and cannot be filtered by the kidney so it is never found in the urine we use urine dipstick test to look for the presence of bilirubin in the urine right so this was all about the metabolism of bilirubin i believe you must have learned something very much useful and valuable uh, in this video of uh, bilirubin metabolism thank you so much for your patient listening i will be coming up with the new videos in which i will be explaining about the uh, approach how do you approach a patient of uh, you know bilirubin elevation or hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice and uh, how other liver enzymes are important to diagnose certain conditions what is the importance of different different liver enzymes so that is all thank you thank you so very much